Thank you. So the question is, who can I be when I can no longer be me? I love working with interesting people, and the sports industry has afforded me the opportunity to work with a number of very interesting people. For about 20 years, I've observed athletes transitioning into and ultimately out of professional sports. Overnight, they are transformed into new identities and lifestyles due to their new roles. Now, most of us are not icons. However, we all experience life-altering moments. So in this presentation, you'll learn that you share far more in common with these, with these icons than you may have imagined. Through the years, I observed a consistent pattern in the identity transformation in these transitioning athletes. Based on these observations, I outlined five transformational stages built on the theoretical foundations established by two renowned psychologists. Eric Erickson, who defined identity stages, and James Marcia, who expanded the work of Erickson and identified identity states. And he's credited with defining the term identity crisis. Since this is Texas, I decided to spotlight a football player transitioning into and out of professional sports. Now, this information also applies not just to professional sports, but other career and life situations. So for example, you landed your dream job, but all too soon lost it. Or perhaps finally marrying your longtime sweetheart only to lose him or her through death or divorce. In each of these instances, a major identity transformation occurs. So the first transformation involves ego identity. Ego identity develops from a strong sense of self. So as the athlete is transitioning from the college into the pros, he is no longer the star. He must start anew as a rookie. And this impacts his identity, his ego identity. And sometimes rookies struggle with this process and precipitates what's called an identity crisis. His friends may accuse him of being different. He's no longer the same now that he's in the pros. And of course, he'll try to convince them that he's exactly the same as he was before. However, that statement in and of itself is confirmation of his denial of this transformation. And this is akin to a new military recruit suddenly being deployed, or perhaps a freshman college student going away, leaving home for the first time and going far away to college. The second aspect relates to identity foreclosure. Now the athlete is in the pros, and he is a walking, talking, breathing, feeling corporation. He'll have a new image. He'll have a brand that will be packaged and marketed, marketed to sports enthusiasts who will buy. He also no longer says, that I play football, but he will become football. His language will begin to change. He has bought into the culture and lifestyle of professional sports. And his previous identity has been foreclosed. He has now embraced the culture to the extent that the demands of his time, the demands of his life are no longer personal and private. He is now owned by the sport. And he will say, I am football. Football is my life. Living the dream. His dream is realized. 
You may have heard the term, perception is greater than reality. Well, in professional sports, many athletes struggle with the distinction between the perception of professional sports and the reality of professional sports. Most of the public only sees the glamour and the fame that accompanies professional sports. However, there's a high risk and compromise the sacrifice that's made in order to play this sport. Only recently has serious attention been paid to the suffering and damage experienced by these athletes to their bodies and their brains. As a matter of fact, we may not know until years, until years down the line the severity of their injuries. And often, these injuries to their bodies, their joints, and their brains are irreversible. Living the dream, perception greater than reality. We all take tremendous risk in pursuit of our dreams. Some of us take more risk than others. But in this instance, there's a tremendous price to pay. A change in reality. We understand in the life of the professional athlete, over time, things change. The lifespan of, a, the, the, lifespan of the career of the professional football player is less than four years, which means that most or many retire before the age of 30. Over a period of time, the toll it takes on the body begins to be exposed. The amount of effort it takes, not just to play the game, but just to get to the game. And even then, the performance is disappointing. Whether through injury or aging or the emergence of new and more effective talent, the writing's on the wall, the end is in sight. Now the player's language once again begins to change. He no longer says who I am and what I do. He now begins to say who I used to be. The glory days have now faded into the good old days. Retired, out of the game, for the first time since he was seven or eight years old, he's no longer playing the game that's been the core around which his entire life was centered. He's no longer a football player. He doesn't have a job playing football. He doesn't have a job. He's unemployed. He's no longer a member of a pack or a team. He's all alone for the first time in his life. And one player explained it to me this way. He said, when I entered professional sports, it was like I boarded a train, and we took off rapidly. And I watched as I passed by the world. I watched. I was going somewhere. But all too quickly, that train stopped and dropped me off back at the same point where I first boarded. And as I looked around, I noticed the world had changed. But this time, the world has passed me by. So let's nail down a few helpful tools and ideas, suggestions that I have used and provided for some of the players that I work with. And these tools are applicable to careers and other life situations. So we understand that life transitions are transformative. We get that. We understand that. But what do we do when we become confused and frustrated? Well, we react to that. So go ahead, get it out. We can't control our emotions and feelings, but we certainly can control how we feel about them. 
But if we reframe our challenges and look at them as opportunities, they become empowering and motivating. So that's when we get a grip and get over it, and we begin to focus in a task mode. So outline the priorities and begin to address them one at a time. You can also begin to revisit and perhaps redefine your life purpose. But you will know that you are beginning to move forward when you look in that rearview mirror, when you're no longer looking in the rearview mirror as you're driving forward. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but what you do need to do is reinvent how it fits or what role it plays in that current life situation. Face your feel, fears. Avoid denial. Apply the skills that you already have and the knowledge and build upon that foundation. You may want to develop or acquire new skills. But if you fall, just look up and then get up. And again, keep moving forward. So understand that your point of view can influence your understanding of your situation. Expose yourself to new opportunities. For some of the players, I recommend that they have an advisory board. It makes sense. When you connect with people who are currently doing what you'd like to do, but also with people who represent other industries and areas of expertise and degree of experiences that they can offer to you. And network. It's not just what you know. It's also who you know as well as who knows you. And change your view, change your perspective. Instead of looking at your situation from one point of view, change and look at it from another. And that will also change how you see that situation. So when you see the situation, you can recognize that there's so many facets of which you belong. You're a multidimensional, multifaceted person. And perhaps up to that point, you've only been living in one space and one place. Explore. And experience other opportunities. But you need to look at redefining who you are and how you live in your current space. So this is an opportunity to discover another dimension of yourself. And you have perhaps at some point in your life had a mental list or for some a bucket list. Things and opportunities that you up to this point had not had a chance to take advantage of. Now's your time. Now's your time to explore and apply the knowledge and those transferable skills to enhance moving forward to a new opportunity. So we come back to the beginning of this presentation where I pose the question, who can I be when I can no longer be me? Well, here's your answer. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. So make a decision. Define who you are. You've heard this before. Life is a journey, not a destination. It really doesn't matter which road we choose to take. But what matters is the person we become on the journey. Thank you.